In the early part of 1997, I was a young, married, full-time college student when I walked into a local scrapbook store called Reflections of Time in Provo, Utah. I introduced myself and asked if I could teach classes. So for a couple of short months, I did passionately teach other people about scrapbooking and creative lettering. I had an average of three students per class. A month or so into that, I approached another local store called Provocraft and ended up teaching there for several months, now with a growing average of 15 students per class. In the summer of 1996, I received a flyer in the mail announcing that a new magazine was launching. It was called Creating Keepsakes, and it was all about scrapbooking. I was completely elated that there would be a publication dedicated entirely to my hobby. It was about six or seven months later that I randomly met a woman by the name of Clarine Downs. In fact, it was on January 19, 1997. I remember because that day became a pivotal moment in my life. As I got to chatting with Clarine, I learned that she was the mother of Lisa Bernson, Creating Keepsakes founding editor. It was through Clarine that I was introduced to Lisa Bernson, who liked what she saw in my little class handouts and ultimately invited me to contribute to Creating Keepsakes. My first article was published just a few months later in the fourth issue of the magazine. The focus? Handwriting, hand-drawn creative lettering. I also began an entire column devoted to creative border ideas. Then I contributed theme ideas, page layout ideas, and really found myself in every area of the magazine and in every issue. So the next thing I knew, I was given a title as the magazine's creative editor. And somehow I even found myself on local television talking about scrapbooking and creative lettering as well. Six months after meeting Lisa Bernson's mother, I attended my first ever scrapbooking convention in July of 1997, which was one of the very earliest of its kind, and it was held in Salt Lake City. I hand-lettered custom scrapbook page titles for everybody that came by. In August that year, the Midwest Scrapbook Convention in Minneapolis, Minnesota was my first time actually traveling to a big convention, and this is when things really started sinking in for me. About 150 people signed up to be in my lettering class, and I could not believe it. But this occasion confirmed for, my, for me my love for teaching. The following spring, Lisa and I were making appearances here and there. We met many enthusiastic scrapbookers who shared our passion for documenting life. Even though I was a full-time student still, and trying to finish my bachelor's degree at the time, I was far more excited about the work that was becoming a very integral part of my life. I reported to the office on a regular basis and after classes, and I also set up an entire wall of a home office in our teeny tiny apartment. Everyone running the company, Lisa and Steve, Don and Deanna, Mark, they really infused their creativity in running the business and making our growth fun we enjoyed some really great company parties. I remember one such occasion where we were receiving training and guidelines and pep talks, and this is where they really established that my role in the company was being part of the creative team and also product development. As Creating Keepsakes creative editor on a part-time basis at that time, it didn't take long before I was working full-time immediately upon my college graduation. I created visuals for the magazine, carried out various creative projects, wrote a ton of articles, brainstormed editorial content, researched and used products, you name it. We even produced CD-ROMs with all of my handwritten fonts. I also helped set up and organize the scrapbooking space at corporate headquarters, which also doubled up as a great conference room. Essentially, I found my home away from home. I knew I belonged in this industry with this company doing what I was doing at the time that I was doing it. These were the faces that I saw every day. Victoria, Mark, Kim, Tracy, Steve, Paul. Our office was located in Orem, Utah and filled with many new friends in my life. Creating Keepsakes was growing. The size of the magazine, the number of readers, even the staff was growing. As of summer 1998, our distribution was over 200,000. I was having fun with the team and also on my own, meeting with others outside of our little bubble. 
My work was taking me places. I even went to a scrapbooking retreat at a dude ranch once, of all places. The CK team traveled a couple of times a year to attend trade shows as well. Going to Chicago for ACCI in the summer of 1998 was my first ever trade show. And to say that I was overwhelmed would be an, an understatement. <laughs> I thought trade shows were overwhelming, but then we attended CKU events. Creating Keepsakes University was an enormously popular scrapbooking event where women of all ages came from across the country and even from other corners of the earth to learn about and celebrate this hobby. We traveled to dozens of cities and took this event all over the map. One thing led to another and eventually I wrote my first book. And over the course of about eight years, I wrote and published nine books in all. One um, was on creative lettering, there was another on card making, there was family history scrapbooking, page design, theme ideas, sketches, you name it. Before I knew it, my work was taking me to countries I had never been. Never in a million years did I know that my little hobby would grow into a career that would take me around the globe. Ultimately, I ended up on a crazy and rewarding journey that I never imagined would become a meaningful part of my life, my story. I maintained my full-time position for 12 years until I resigned in 2009 so that I could start a new chapter in carrying out my passion for helping others by starting my own company. I am forever grateful to Lisa Burnson for trusting me in the first place. And I will always, always, always hold a special place in my heart for Creating Keepsakes Magazine, the company that provided tremendous opportunities for me personally and professionally.